Welcome everyone to another video of Vinyl Attic. This is Chili and in this video I'm gonna name and show you guys 10 hip-hop albums that and records or just you know 12 and singles albums that I feel that if you're collecting hip-hop these are ones that you should have and I'm just gonna make this a ongoing series um, because I really haven't really gone through a lot of hip-hop as much and so this would be a good way of just you know sharing hip-hop albums and artists and uh, before I get into this please don't forget to hit the like button comment on this video share this video please and if you haven't please subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you will see updates of upcoming videos okay so with that out of the way Okay, so uh, let's start off here with this album, Immortal Technique, Revolutionary Volume 2. This is in red vinyl, and it may not be, you know, of course, um, as far as a household name. I think people who really listen to hip-hop, as far as underground hip-hop, this guy was, you know, really uh, a big name back in the day. Uh, in the 2000s, I saw him at Rock the Bells in San Bernardino. And, you know, what's it say on this hype sticker? Vicious, unrelenting, uncompromising, venomous, blunt, intelligent, articulate, political, and revolutionary. Yes, he does go in really deep on certain uh, issues regarding the state of the world. And... If you're into conspiracy theories, okay? So uh, we have songs like The Point of No Return, Peruvian Cocaine, which is really cool. The Cause of Death, which is all about 9-11. Uh, Freedom of Speech. Industrial Revolution, The Fourth Branch is a great one. So if you really want to just have your mind blown and maybe learn something, <laughs> this is the guy that you, know, you could want to listen to. As far as like history, political uh, issues were going on and whatnot, so mortal technique. Okay, moving right along to another great MC is Genius Jizza, you know, from the Wu Tang Clan. When it came down to doing Wu Tang Clan, of uh, picking a Wu Tang Clan for my first 10 here, uh, I figured on picking uh, one of the solo albums, and this is one of my favorite solo ones from all these guys. Um, you got Inspected Deck, of course, you know, Bobby Digital album, you know, Method Man. And I felt like this guy is one of my favorites out of this group. And um, this one, of course, it has Cold World, um, Killer Hills, uh, Investigative Reports, State That, the Do there's just this whole uh, thing on here, but it doesn't have the basic instructions before leaving Earth which is on the CD, it's only, uh, yeah, it, it cuts off before that, so, um, this is still one of my favorites, though, and if you ever get a chance to listen to it, if you never have, but I think if you're collecting hip-hop, this is a good album to have, so, now this one, I believe, came out in 85, and this is Dougie Fresh and the Get Fresh Crew, and you talking about the history of hip-hop and the human beatbox Dougie Fresh is the guy and you know this one has um, what's his name on here okay he does Lottie Dottie uh, Ricky Ricky D and MC Ricky D uh, and Dougie Fresh so Lottie Dottie which was of course remade by Snoop Dogg that's right, he did it on the uh, his, his first album, Doggy Style. And uh, Slick Rick is, is the guy on here. His name is Ricky D at the time, but uh, on, on this label. But The Show and Lonnie Dottie, yeah, when they first came out in 85, was sexually explicit lyrics. It was like the, uh, the, the song back then <laughs> that, you know, had dropped an f-bomb or something on there but it was just like um at the time it was just like that was like a big deal right so now moving right along 
Now, this is a band that is just, I feel, that, that broke a lot of ground because A, they play instruments on here. You got Quest Love on the drums, right? But you have Black Thought, which is why I think another great MC. And this album is called Phrenology. And this one was the one that pretty much got them more popular with the song The C 2.0. You know, um, and that's with featuring Cody Chestnut, but Thought at Work, Black Thought, Pussy Galore. Uh, Jill Scott is on here. She comes on there in Complexity. This is just a, a great album, and this is a, a Vinyl Me Please. Brown vinyl, or smoky brown. But Geffen Records. But, however, this was a good release. I'm glad I got this one. Um, if you're going to start off wanting to get into The Roots, I would suggest this album. Because, um, A, it has some well-to-do popular songs on there. And then you could just, if you like what you hear, then I guess you could just start going and looking in their back catalog but yes the roots okay so now when we're talking about way back we're gonna go past what year is this i think this is 82 yeah and this is africa bambata and the soul sonic force planet rock and this, when I first heard this song, it was on a college radio. I would think I was like 12 years old. And it just sounded like the future, right? And it kind of electro funk is coming in on this. But, you know, Africa Bambada was uh, into the craft work, you know. And a lot of the stuff that's on here, he took from craft work. And because uh, he felt like that was like a great band a great sound that he's never heard of before so that that's what really influenced some of this early soul sonic force and planet rock is a must to have i need to find me a, a nice better one of this because i played it so much okay so moving right along and when you're talking about hip-hop uh royalty you can't forget this woman's name and I'm talking about Lauren Hill from the Fugees. Now, this was the follow-up album for, for Miss Education. It really is not a follow-up as far as it's not a studio album. It's live MTV Unplugged. This is a music on vinyl release. And she's pretty much just playing guitar and singing songs new material. She doesn't go and play anything from Fuji's or um, Miss Education. And it was really kind of, it was critically acclaimed, but you know, it didn't really sell that many copies. However, I think it was just a good place where hip hop can go and with just an acoustic guitar. You know, and um, she's rapping with an acoustic guitar and just playing songs and singing. Um, and she does some covers. She does it. She even does um, so much things to say by Bob Marley and her brother, his brother, Bob Marley's brother, who is her husband, joins them on you know congas and stuff like that. But for the most part, it's her playing the guitar and singing. And a lot of people, you know, uh, it was a hit or miss. Didn't like it. Didn't like, like she would, you know, she'd be having these little interludes where she kind of speaks between songs and about where she is and where she's at at the time. And uh, a lot of it had to do with like people kind of like rejecting this, this whole thing. And, uh, and of her saying like, oh yeah, well, people kind of view me as like this hip hop folks singer and, um, but she doesn't care. She's going to go ahead and do it anyway. And that's the spirit of hip hop is just 
doing whatever you want to do, taking things and just breaking down structures and pushing it forward. And you don't really see, I don't, to me, I don't really see that as much today. Um, now, our next artist here. Now, I picked this album because this was after all his controversy and, and, and his big selling albums. This was Ice-T's Home Invasion. Now, he had a lot of censorship and, and his albums were being banned. One in particular was the Body Count album for the song Cop Killer, which people would always say was a hip-hop album, but it wasn't. That's a, that's a metal band, okay? Um, he, he was in a metal band called Body Count, and the song Cop Killer was on that album. But every time it's always mentioned about that situation, it's always, oh, it was a rap record. No, it was him doing hip, uh, metal. And that band still puts out albums today, Body Count, with Ernie C on guitar. Great band. Now, this one is the first post Warner Brothers drop from that big label um, album, Home Invasion. And he answers all his detractors on here he has ice motherfucking tea it's on um home invasion which is the whole kind of concept of this cover here with the white kid uh in the suburbs listening to all this hip-hop music and kind of just um at the time these are the bands that were kind of big like ice cube and public enemy and this and that so it's kind of just uh as he says in the song filling their heads with uh guns and bitches and hoes and all that kind of stuff but it's uh, I, I like the cover i thought it was really creative you know and um really great album coming from that whole highly polished warner brothers uh sound of um og to this it's like strictly back to like it sounds kind of like hardcore underground hip-hop very kind of you know, simple, you know what I mean? And um, songs on here like 99 Problems, which is something that Jay-Z used later on and copied that, you know, there was a whole kind of controversy with that because Ice-T didn't get any money from that and the whole 99 Problems with a bitch ain't one. Yeah, that, that, that was from this album and he was with Brother Marquise from uh, Two Live Crew doing that song. But yeah, if you ever get a chance to get this one, this is a first pressing. It's, it hasn't never been re-released. Should Ice T Home Invasion. So there's just different kinds of variety with hip hop back then. You know, you could get some gangster stuff. You could get some kind of, you know, East Coast jazz kind of tip or you know whatever. And this one is um, really broke the mainstream. Sir mix a lot, and so this is like very pop. You know, I, I guess you could call it very pop. I mean, um, Baby's Got Back. And of course, this was a Grammy winner for Best Solo Performance. That's how, you know, hip hop pretty much was breaking through past the mainstream, getting, you know, recognition like this. You know, featuring the double platinum single, number one single, the number one song. Okay, Baby Got Back, Mac Daddy's on here. Swap Meet Louie. This is this is from the Northwest. He's from Seattle, right? Because I think he has a song, Seattle Ain't Bullshit. And so that's where he's from. Sir Mix a Lot. Okay. Now, classic albums. Here we go. Um, this is the one that we were introduced to the great KRS One, Boogie Down Productions, BDP. Criminal Minded, and it has Scott, Scott LaRock, who was murdered, you know, and so um, their story is interesting, and it's amazing, and this album here, Poetry, South Bronx, but also known as The Teacher, you know, Blast Master, you would have all these different names, you know, Karis One, but Knowledge Reign Supreme on nearly everyone is, you know, that that is his go-to, right? Nine millimeter goes bang. 
a uh, word from our sponsor, Elementary Draw Side B is Dope Beat Remix for P is Free, The Bridge is Over, which is about his battle with MC Shan, Super Ho, and Criminal Minded. I saw him play this whole entire album from the top front to back, and um, the Rock the Bells uh, in Santa Barbara, and that's where I saw, of course, um, Immortal Technique was there, and... Lauren Hill, there was a whole slew of people, of course, and um, this was back in 2009, I believe, 2008, but yeah, a lot of these people I mentioned, um, like um, the Wu-Tang Clan, they were there as well. Okay, so last but certainly not least in this first crop of 10, I'm going to leave it with this great song here. This is The Message by Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five. I would think is like one of the first best rap songs to come out. And uh, I mean, the storytelling and everything about this was just on point. I mean, it was just like, okay, wow, this is a really serious art form. It can be, you know, and other than what we were listening to, what was coming out before, like kind of Rapper's Delight, and, you know, songs like Rapture by Blondie, which were great, cool songs. But, of course, um, the message and things like uh, well, Curtis Blow was kind of kind of putting out kind of songs that were kind of lighthearted and stuff like that. But this one was just like, wow, this has uh, changed everything. It's on Sugar Hill Records. And so, yes, Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five featuring Melly Mel and Duke Booty the message so yes this is a good one to get if you're starting to get hip-hop you, you need you know the, the for your hip-hop collection that's it you got if you don't have the message then it's not legit <laughs> you got to have the message so that is my first 10 uh hip-hop uh crop of albums uh, 12 inch singles records however you want to call it you know what are your thoughts on these 10 i'm going to try to just always just get a diverse kind of uh set of records when it comes to hip-hop you know whether it was an acoustic album to you know um something like something nice and old school you know and something kind of recent or whatever you know just kind of change it up a bit you know and so i thought th these 10 were really kind of going there and kind of setting the precedent of you know the kind of videos that i'm going to show regarding 10 hip-hop records okay so with that i'll shut up and i'll see you guys on the next video bye